if you're looking for flash performance, M2 is a new standard, and it's really going to make a big difference. Can you tell us about it? We think so. Um, the M.2 form factor is sort of a, a replacement for their, or the next generation, I should say, for MSATA, which I think is pretty well known. It uh, uses a MSATA uses a an, an existing PCIe mini card mm -hmm. uh, form factor, whereas the M.2 was designed from scratch to accommodate um, as many flash chips as possible, and also supports uh, one SATA port at six gigabits per second, or up to four. PCIe lanes, which will give you up to four gigabytes per second performance. This is an MSATA device. Okay. Uh, it's based on the uh, PCIe mini card and is used in, for caching applications uh, in today a lot of many of today's uh, notebooks. This is the newer M.2. You can see that it's uh, much thinner uh, uh, in terms of width. It's only 22 millimeters wide. And it is also thinner vertically, so it doesn't add to the height of the uh, mobile devices that it's targeted at. Now, how do you differentiate between the two? Will one of these cards have both interfaces, or typically one? You know, that's hard to say. What the I think what the manufacturers are planning is systems with one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not privy to all their plans at this point, but I know that we do know. I think that. MSATA will exist for a long time because it's very cost effective and it's in a lot of systems already. Works very well as a caching device mm -hmm. with uh, maybe 30 or 40 gigabytes of uh, memory on here and uh, with an HDD it gives you a very good performance. Now uh, what are some of the advantages of M.2 in terms of throughput and capacity? Well with M.2 as I said it comes in a number of different um, uh, form factors, lengths, the width is pretty standard at 22 millimeters mm -hmm. and there's a defined height. You can see it's much thinner than the M7. And the layout of the PCB for the M.2 has been optimized to maximize the number of flash chips that you can get on there. Uh, we have one, for example, here that supports up to 480 gigabytes and, of course, higher capacities are no doubt coming. Now, in terms of availability, uh, how soon do you expect to see M.2 platforms being delivered? Again, that I have to refer you to the system manufacturers. I know there's some things in the works and uh, may be available pretty soon. I would anticipate this year to see things in systems. Uh, but again, I'm not privy to everybody's uh, product plans. Mm -hmm. Certainly, what we're trying to show here uh, at the show is the fact that the M.2 cards are available, the test systems are available, you've got everything you need to do M.2, uh, including the uh, host site connectors. Now, you mentioned that there were uh, various sizes available. Given one socket that you have, uh, is a particular uh, card going to be the only one that fits, or will a variety of these fit in there? You know, I, I have to think it's it's going to be in the mid-range somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got sizes that range from anywhere to, I think, 30 or 40 millimeters in length up to over 100 millimeters in length. And I assume that the probably the mid-range ones will be the most, like around 80 millimeters will probably be among, among the most prevalent, but mm -hmm. something for every, uh, every uh, situation. Now these are obviously going to be used in things like tablets and laptops, but uh, the form factor like uh, MSATA has been used in a lot of embedded applications as well. It's suitable for that. Certainly, it could be used anywhere you want to, uh, if you need the the, uh, the capacity and the performance. However, in something like a desktop or an embedded application where you've got the space, um, probably M.2 M is not the, the best choice because it's um, it gives it, you don't need the uh, the, the size uh, the small size that M.2 offers. Mm -hmm. Well, great! Thanks very much for telling us about it. Thank you.